We are back here on the Lynn Hayes Freeland Show. As I said earlier, I'm so excited to have Hugh Price with us here. We're going to talk about his latest book, This African American Life. This is your story. It's my story. It's my ancestor's story. It's the story of all of us. I mean, it's interesting. My story is a proxy for the African American experience in this country. Absolutely. And I, one of the things that struck me the most about the book is you really describe uh, your early life as growing up in an Afri a middle class african-american family which i think sometimes the rest of the world doesn't realize that we exist well you know a lot of our folks assume though that we all came out of the womb with those of us who were fortunate to be middle class mm -hmm. came out of the womb with suits and dresses on right my, my father's <laughs> father was um a farmer who died when my dad was three years old mm -hmm. and uh so you know these folks are ancestors are only a generation or so removed but i was blessed to have an intact family a father and mother uh, my father was a physician my mother was an activist in washington dc and we lived in a kind of cocooned African-American community in the orbit of Howard University. So mm -hmm. we had all of that power and influence and tradition and legacy of Howard to buttress us as well. There's so many things I want to talk to you about. And since you mentioned Howard, I want to bring that up because when we look at Howard University, we look at some of our HBCUs across the country, some of them are struggling, yet yeah. in fact, they have been a cornerstone of our community. Yeah, they're, they're remarkable. I mean, it's interesting, when I was growing up, you know, we, we lived in a segregated community and racism was right there in front mm -hmm. of your eyes. But the message from being part of the Howard family was don't ever internalize those obstacles. Mm. Don't let that define who you are. Your mission is to get prepared and then to climb over, tunnel underneath, blast through or go around those obstacles, but don't let them defeat you. And that was a signal that came from our parents, from our teachers, etc. And that's true to this day. It's interesting. Uh, my wife was involved in taking some students to visit uh, Howard University last year. Mm -hmm. And the students there said that the university and the faculty deeply committed to their success. The institution's amazingly supportive. So that mission continues to this day. And now when you say that, I have to go back to a story that you tell. I think it's actually in the foreword of the book. Uh, when you took an exam. <laughs> yeah. I was, yeah, I was working for a Defense Department contractor in the summer between my junior and senior years in high school, and I'd gotten the job because I was very strong in math and science. And they took it, and I was the first African American to get this job. We're talking 1958, mm -hmm. 57. Mm -hmm. And they gave us the test to assess our potential. And when I got debriefed, they told me that I probably would get to go to college, but that I should not count on going to graduate school or professional school. And that kind of rattled me. Mm -hmm. I went home and told my parents, and they said, don't pay them any mind. Don't pay them any mind. Just keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on striving to, ex to excel. And that assessment, that misassessment of me, stuck with me my entire life. And mm -hmm. whether I accomplished something that was fairly significant, I'd walk across the stage to get an award or, or an honorary degree, and I'd say, up yours. <laughs> 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 but I tell that story to any very young person I meet. And mm -hmm. I have many, many parents who have had the same experience with their kids. It's shocking, even to this day. I was going to say, that's what's concerning to me it's the so most, or that's what resonated the most about so that, that that's still happening to our kids. You know, the head of the Urban League in Long Island, uh, Teresa Sanders, once told me a story about her daughter, who was doing very well in school. Miss Sanders went in to see the guidance counselor to try to get her daughter placed in advanced placement. And the guidance counselor said, I don't have the paperwork for that today, but I do have the paperwork for special education. Hmm. Would you like us to put wow. your son in special education? It was all she could do not to hurt him. <laughs> I mean, that, that to I'm this speechless day, at that, yeah, to, the, to this day. Absolutely. So obviously we can't go through the whole book right. in, in this very short segment, um, but you touch on so many things. You've had a varied career. Yes. You have done well from the New York Times to the Urban League. Can't hold a job. <laughs> what would you say the greatest impact on who Hugh Price is today? Uh, my parents, mm -hmm. uh, they were strivers. My mother was an activist. I had a great mentors. I mean, I got to know people like Vernon Jordan and John Jacob and Whitney Young and Franklin Thomas and Charles Bannerman, many people who were extraordinarily accomplished. And they, they were who I wanted to become mm. when I grew up. 
uh, professionally. So they sort of charted a course. People like Clifton Wharton, who was a major trailblazer in this country, mm -hmm. um, they were the people I wanted to be when I grew up, when it was my turn. And so that helped set the North Star for me. Okay. And I always dreamt of having an opportunity to lead a legendary organization like the National Urban League. And it was a dream come true when it, when it happened in 1994. I got two questions I really want to fit in. Yeah. Now, you obviously know a lot about your ancestry, your genealogy. My mother knew a lot. Your mother my, knew a lot. My, my okay. mother too. All did right. all that work. She was an archivist, an, an activist who transformed herself into an archivist. She went back to graduate school and got her master's degree in library science at the age of 58. Wow. And then became a professional archivist. Mm -hmm. um, she was always interested in hunting down the story of our family, particularly on her side, because she'd heard all these family stories, and so she and her sister did the, all that legwork. And I had all that information in boxes in our house, and so I just rode uh, okay. the remarkable work that she had done, because I would not have had the patience to do it, but she was a pack rat. She'd hunt down, you know, deeds and wills and all, and, and all that stuff, and so, uh, but there are some fascinating stories. I mean, all accidents of history, but they're very illustrative of the African-American experience. Absolutely, and the book is This African-American Life. My final question to sure. you, now that you look at 2018, uh. <laughs> Give me your assessment of where we are. Where are we as a part of our collective African-American life? Well, as you look back at the arc of our own story and history, we have always fought to get this country to live up to the letter and spirit of the Constitution. That fight is unending. Mm -hmm. unending. Um, somebody asked me recently whether the arc of uh, justice, uh, arc of the universe still bends toward justice. Uh, yeah, it's a little dented right now. <laughs> but it just reaffirms why we've got to organize, why we've got to vote, uh, why we've got to be out there on November 6th and beyond. Can't take anything for granted. Um, and also why we have to work to try to reunify mm. this country. We're at a dangerous state of polarization, which mm -hmm. is uglier than anything I remember, even in the days of George Wallace. Uh, the governor, segregationist governor of Alabama. So we've got a lot of work ahead, but this is a democracy. So we have the right to speak and to coalesce, and we've got to do that. Absolutely. Thanks so much for Thank joining us today. The book again is This African American Life. You can get it on Amazon. Go to your local bookstore, demand it. I got to tell you, I have to read a lot of books for this job. Most of them I have to push through. This riveting at best. We'll be back in just a minute when the Lynn Hayes Freeland Show continues.